Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, coming at you from my maker space that I created out in my garage. Now, I'm not gonna say it's completely organized because there are literally piles of stuff that you couldn't climb over behind the cameras, but I'm not gonna worry about that if you don't. Today, we're gonna actually be creating fidget spinners and a challenge that Inventables has laid on the table for me and hopefully all of you to create our own custom fidget spinners using this machine right here. This is actually a Carvey from Inventables. Now, the Carvey is a CNC milling or 3D carving machine. And what separates it from a 3D printer is where a 3D printer is additive manufacturing, where you're literally building something up with material. With a CNC milling machine or 3D carving machine, what you're doing is taking material away from something, kind of like a statue. You break away the pieces of rock and then inside is the beautiful thing. So today we're gonna be using their software called Easel, which runs under any web browser that supports HTML5. And we're gonna use an application inside of that that allows you to create these little fidget spinners. But they're also issuing a challenge to the community and myself to create these spinners and upload them to their website on inventables.com. And I will have all that information linked down in the video description for you to go and submit your own spinners. You don't even have to have this machine to design and submit your own spinners. And they're also giving out awards in the form of gift cards, $1, $5, and one other denomination that you can actually win just by submitting designs that other people can take and create. It's actually actually a really cool idea and I'm glad to be a part of it. But today we're going to try to create our own custom fidget spinners using their software. All right. So on my screen right now, I have the easel software open. It's very easy. You just navigate to easel.inventables.com and it opens up in your web browser. And when you first get your Carvey, it will walk you through step by step, how to set it up, how to put the bits into it and remove them, how to secure the material. It's very meticulous in how it shows everybody how to use the machine so that you don't make a mistake. And then if everything goes horribly, horribly wrong and things start grinding and catching fire, you can push a button on the front of the machine to pause it right where it's at so that you can correct whatever's going on and then you can resume it after that. So okay, so inside of the Easel software, I've opened up a new project. You can actually go up and click on the apps button right here and we're gonna go ahead and find the fidget spinner app. You can see there's all kinds of apps for generating puzzles, there's apps for generating uh, mazes, there's even an app for generating boxes, which I'd imagine a lot of people are probably gonna be using this thing for making like little craft boxes and stuff like that. So they've already got you covered. You don't need any kind of experience designing anything to make those specific things. And apparently for fidget spinners, we don't need to know how to do anything either because you can see right here, the fidget spinner app just asks us how thick do we want the walls? We can move these sliders around so we can make a fat fidget spinner. We can make a skinny fidget spinner. Uh, let's, let's make a medium, a medium all-inclusive fidget spinner. And then for the arm lengths, you can make them longer, you can make them shorter, depending on you know what your what your preference is. I think I want to kind of go for one that's really slim. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then for arms, you can do uh, two, the conventional two arm, or you can do the three, or you can do four. But if you want more than four arms, you're on your own, but you can do it. And we're gonna show you how to do that after we create this one. So let's go ahead and start out with uh, a simple one. Let's do, let's do a two arm. Now that I have the design over here, you can select all the different elements of the design. And uh, you can also see how deep the cuts are. It shows you right here with this little slider that you move up and down how deep you want the cut to go into the material. And then over on the right hand side, it shows you just what's happening in real time so that you kind of get a view of what's gonna happen when you run the machine. All right, so we have some engravable polymer. It's white in the middle and it's got black on the outside so that when we carve into it, it'll look like three, or well, two colors, right, really? But then everyone's gonna be like, black's not a color. <laughs> okay, so we need to secure this into the machine, but first we need to figure out what the material width is. Sir, could you please use the included micrometer? By the way, they do send this with the machine, and we're gonna measure this material. So this material is a quarter inch, so we're gonna go inside of here and click on material, and we're gonna tell it what type of material we're using. And you can use a lot more materials than they show in here. These are just the stock materials. If you wanna use the machine easily and you just wanna get materials from Inventables, this is the easiest way to do it. So we're gonna go and look for the two color HDPE, yep. okay? So we're gonna select that one and we need to change the material thickness. So the material thickness on this is, you said it was a 0.25 of an inch, That's quarter inch? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna enter that into the box. Now the machine is gonna know how thick the material is and that's critically important because if you make it too thick, it's just gonna run the bit out in, in the air and, and waste time. All right, let's put it in. Another thing to note is if you wanna cut multiple things out of the material and maximize its usage, try to move your designs to the edge where they're not gonna interfere with the brackets holding the material down, but so that you can maximize how many of these you can actually cut out of one piece of material. Because if I just stick it here in the center, it's gonna make things difficult. So try to place things strategically and they also 
also give you an alignment in here showing you the eight inches by 12 inches so you can approximate where the cuts were on the old material. All right, so to put the material into the machine, it's pretty easy to do. They just provide some little blocks here, little plastic blocks that you just pull screws out on. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in there and you just use as many as you need to secure the material. And you do wanna make sure that the material is secure because if it isn't and the material comes loose while it's cutting, you're gonna have a bad day. Okay, and you wanna line the material up with the edge of this little bracket down here. And it's actually important that you get it all the way in there because it uses that to determine the depth of the material. But if you make a mistake and it cuts into the board, it's not the end of the world because you can always buy another board. So now the material's loaded. That's all there is to it. You just wanna make sure that where you put the brackets isn't where you're cutting the material out because it isn't aware of where those brackets are and it will try to cut into them if you get that wrong. All right, let's go ahead and close the top. Okay, so the material is now loaded into the machine. We have our cuts all defined. We have the material input. Now we gotta select the bit. So we're gonna go up to the bit and you can see there's a 1 32nd inch, a 1 16th, a 8th inch, there's a 1 8th inch straight cut bit or other if you wanna use your own different types of bits for cutting exotic materials. Now the nice thing is these are all color coded. They have like a little collar on them. So we wanna use the blue one, the 1 16th inch bit right here, which I already have loaded into the machine. And there's instructions on how to take them out and they even include the tools and the wrenches for removing and adding the new bits. It's actually a very simple process. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go over and click carve. Now it does go through a bunch of confirmations when you hit carve, just to give you one last chance to check everything. So let's do it. And now send it to the machine and it's coming to life. Now, one of the things I really like about the Carvey over the other machines that I've used that is actually figures out the height of the material by bringing the bit down and touching a little metal dot. Boop. And there it is. Now it knows zero. So now it's gonna plunge down into the material. Now, just like a 3D printer, these things are fun to watch. And you can tell right now from the audio, the machine is incredibly quiet. Now, depending on the material that you're using, it can get louder, but with your cutting plastics and stuff like this, it's all enclosed. So you're not gonna have any problems with dust escaping out of the machine. And it's quiet enough that you could run it on the kitchen table of your apartment complex, which honestly, I don't know of a lot of CNC type milling machines that you could do that with. Now the board that's underneath is, is affectionately called the waste board. And the purpose of that board is to provide a buffer, a soft buffer for the, the tip or the bit to go into without damaging it or dulling it down too much. And now one of the really cool things about this over a 3D printer is it's very fast. These cuts are happening in very thick layers. You can also adjust the speed of the machine depending on the material that you're working with. Like foam core, you can go incredibly fast. And one of the nice things is you can produce something rapidly. Whereas with a 3D printer to make a fidget spinner like this would take a couple hours of printing to get a decent quality print. And with this, you can see we're almost done with the spinner and this has maybe been just going for a few minutes. There we go. She's all done. It only took a couple of minutes and now the bit's going to retreat back to the home position. It's going to bring the material forward and that's it. All right, so our first spinner is cut. We're just gonna open up the top. Now, the nice thing is it's actually on a little hydraulic like airlift assist cylinder that pulls it up. So it's very easy to operate. Now you can see this is very messy in here, but it's not messy out here, which is what we like. Now, I usually just use a shop vac to clean up afterwards to get all the dust off. And there we go, we just created our first spinner. So once you cut it out, you can see that there is a little bit of debris around the edges, depending on the material that's gonna happen. You can go ahead and just clean that off with a brush or just rub it with your finger. It comes off really nice. Now the question is, how accurate is it? Are my bearings gonna just fit? So let's go ahead and take one of the Abex Saven bearings that's from Inventables. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in. Pressure fits in perfectly. It's not falling out, right? It's in there. So now if I spin that, I actually made it really big. It almost doesn't even fit in my hand. So there, so there it is without the weights. Now if we want, we can add a couple more bearings and give it some more weight. All right, so now we got three bearings in there. Now the ABEX 7 bearings I found work really good if you warm them up. You basically need to spin them a lot, even put them on like an air compressor or something like that and wind them up. You can see how I did that over on my Instagram channel. Uh, it will make the bearing work like two or three times as good as it does right out of the box. But if you guys wanna make a spinner that's freaking amazing, use these. These are ceramic bearings. These things cost about seven bucks a pop versus, you know, cents, right? All right, let's give it a spin. The ceramic bearings have almost no drag. These things just move so nice. But then we run into another problem with the fidget spinners, and that is unless you put a cap on the bearing to protect it, you can rub your finger against the edge and it can slow it down. So I don't think it's ever gonna stop. 
I'm telling you guys, ceramic bearings are the way to go. If you want a fidget spinner that just spins forever, ceramic. I will have a link to the ceramic bearings that I'm using, the exact ones from Amazon down in my video description. And I just, you know, it'd make me feel appreciated if you at least just expanded. Now to create a cap is actually pretty simple because all we need is this little guy right here because it's all about measurements. All we're doing is taking material away. So we're gonna go ahead and just fire up our little micrometer here and zero it out. It's always important to zero these things. And then with zero, we need to figure out a couple things. First, we have to figure out how thick is the bearing. I think we pretty much already know. It's about uh, 0.275 inches in thickness. Or actually, you know what? We can even cheat a little. What we're gonna do is we're gonna steal the inner circle from the, our spinner we just created. So we're gonna copy that inner circle, just control C, and then I'm gonna do a control V and paste it out here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the old design there just, just as so I know that I don't place it where we've already done a cut before. Create a circle right down here. We're gonna drag this circle up here and we're gonna make it the shape, click shape. We're gonna say we want the width to be 315, just like that. And now we got this little guy. So now that is gonna be exactly the size of the hole. Now the question is, how do you get that perfectly centered? Because if it's not centered, this isn't gonna work very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna grab that, like this with the shift key, and then I'm gonna say, go ahead and center those things up. And now it's perfectly in the center. A few moments later. All right, so we have our button created here. And all I had to do was create a circle shape, center another shape for the race width, which we measured, another one for the button width, and then one more on the outside that's an outside cut that cuts the whole thing out and frees it. All right, so we're gonna need two of these buttons because we need one on each side of the bearing. So let's go ahead and duplicate this entire design after I center it back up because I keep getting it uncentered. There we go. We're just gonna select everything, hit Control C, Control V if you're on a PC, and we now have two buttons. All right, so we're gonna cut the buttons out of the same material so we don't have to change anything about the material orientation. We're gonna go ahead and just hit the card button. Now, one of the things I really like about the software is it's really easy to use. You can just pull in basic shapes or you can use the applications, but you also can do more advanced things like with the button, changing the depth on each of the cuts to make something more specific. Now, the really cool thing is it's completely a repeatable process. I could put in another piece of material and cut it out. I could put multiple of these across there, cut them all out, Pull out the material, stick in another plate, cut more, cut more, cut more, and you could make, you know, dozens of these an hour. All right, so the Ezo software's asked me how it turned out. This time I can click, yes, it looked great. But if you do click the other button that says that it messed up, they will ask you if you want support and they will help you solve your problems. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up. But these are the two resulting buttons right here. And the nice thing about these is when you put them into the bearing, slide in one side, and it fits like a glove too. That's perfect pressure fit. So when you put them into the bearing, now the bearing can spin freely without anything touching it. All right, so now it's time to add our new buttons to the spinner. So here's our little spinner with the ceramic bearing. So we're gonna go ahead and pop one in the top. We'll go ahead and pop one in the bottom. And now we physically cannot touch the bearing. You can see the bearing is now concealed. Now there's no way for me to touch that bearing. Spin my pretty, spin. All right, so now we've finished the basic spinner. Now it's time to spice it up a notch. And this time we're gonna say we want four arms and we're gonna make it a little bit thinner because that last one was a little unwieldy. Import. All right, there is our new fancy spinner. We're gonna go ahead and move it up to the corner. Now, the thing is, I want the caps for this one all cut at the same time. And we're gonna cut this one out of uh, like pink acrylic right here. Yeah, you can't really see it. It's fluorescent pink acrylic because it's got the covering on it. This is actually gonna be a really cool looking spinner. All right, so I'm gonna go back and grab my buttons because I don't wanna have to redesign those. I'm gonna open up my other tab and just paste them. Wow, that worked like a charm. All right, the material is secure. Go ahead and close it down. Wow, that is a really cool looking material. See, you couldn't print something like that on a 3D printer. It's one of the nice things about dealing with carving away from materials. You can get these really, really cool, clear materials that if you tried to 3D print, you'd form bubbles in them.
Oh, dude, you hear that? I'm a little nervous. Dude, those ceramic bearings are awesome. Get the ceramic bearings. They have a little bit more side-to-side -side play in them, but for like length of spin, these things are killer. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna create the super crazy fidget spinner. Now inside of the easel software, I already created the spinner. Basically I started with a regular four spinner, deleted the outer perimeter and just created my own and centered everything up. I've got some square cutouts. I got some round cutouts here. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple design, but I just wanted a lot going on. We're gonna put a ceramic bearing in the center and then metal bearings all around. A few inches later. That is the crazy spinner right there that I'm entering in to the challenge for Inventables. And you guys can see the link to this and the other challenges and enter into the challenge by checking the video description down below. But we were able to create our own custom spinner and two spinners using their app that are both radically different. You can use either the ABEC bearings or you can use the ceramic bearings depending on if you want something that spins really free or you want something that you can twist in like a gyro, the metal bearings seem to work better. I would love it if one of you guys would create a perfectly balanced bat and I fidget spinner. And if you do and you upload it to the Inventables challenge, I will cut one on this machine and post it to Instagram. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think the Carvey is an excellent 3D carving machine. It's very quiet, it's enclosed, it's easy to operate, and above all, the software is very, very simple to use, which on something like this is the difference between a purchase and not getting it. I, I get intimidated myself by a lot of software, and I found that this is probably one of the easiest software packages I've ever used for creating anything right out of the box. And if you guys really wanna create big stuff, Behind me, I have the Inventables X-Carve. This thing is three foot by three foot of cutting craziness, but I wouldn't recommend using it in the house because one, it's very loud, and two, it's gonna get dust all over the place. But if you have a nice shop and you wanna cut really big things or a spinner that could take your neighbor's head off, that's the one to get. Also, I'd like to thank Zachariah, otherwise known as Jason, for coming over here and helping me shoot this video. Would you please take a bow, sir? I would like each and every one of you to go follow this guy on Twitter. It's Zachariah. I know you probably don't know how to spell it. I'll have it down in the description. We want to try to get him from six followers to at least seven followers. I'm pretty excited about that because that's how I reward him for helping me get through the ADHD that would have made this video five hours long, but instead it's however long you're watching it right now, which I don't know because I haven't edited it yet. Also, if you want to play around with the easel software, just go to easel.inventables.com. You can create your own designs, literally anything, and publish them for everybody to use. All right, guys, I'm gonna go play with my little wing dings. Actually, you know what, Jason here, which one do you want? You can have one of these. Which one do you want? You want the, you want the fancy one? You want the little pink one? It's okay, I can just make another one, dude. I got, I got a Carvey. I got a Carvey, I can make as many of these as I want, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. So if you guys would like to enter the fidget spinner challenge, head on over to inventables.com, click on the challenge tab and go down and find the fidget spinner challenge. You will see that I have entered one of my fidget spinners, the crazy one here, into the contest and you can enter one too. And if you enter your design and create your design and post a picture of it, you can also get inventable gift cards for your trouble. And the more sophisticated the design is, the more potential gift card revenue you can get to buy other materials and things from inventable to keep on creating more fidget spinners. And I guess it just becomes an endless cycle. Oh, so many people are gonna be mad at this. You guys saw what happened last time I tried this, right? <laughs> 